All right, so has the post-tour depression kicked in for you yet? It's sad, isn't it? It's all over. Well, it's coming back soon. They'll be back for New Year's Eve and then Mexico, and then there's going to be some summer tour announcements. I don't know about a fall tour next year, though. Seems like if I had to go with my gut, no fall tour next year. Unless they're still, hmm, nah, they ain't going to be trying to catch up for 2020. They're there. They've caught up. So this tour, however, got off to a great start in Sacramento, really. You know, some, there were some good ones that night. That show's probably going to get overlooked. But if I had to pick five favorite shows from this tour, man, that one either would be in there or right there at number six. I also liked Arizona a lot. The Forum in Chula. I think people like those. Obviously, the Vegas run, the Animal Night, the Numbers Night. Those would probably be some of my favorite shows. The... Uh, you know, I don't even know if I had a least favorite show. Maybe the 19th didn't have a ton of highlights, although it did have a killer Yamar and Stash. I mean, maybe that night they were just taking a different route. Some of the songs that were great this tour, though. After the summer, maybe not being its best work, Harry Hood coming back strong, of course. Ghost, while I won't say Ghost made a comeback, Ghost never really went anywhere. You know, y'all must have forgot. Mike's song, however, though. You know, we it's been a while since we really carried on about a Mike song. It did. It, it, it You know, several good ones. Maybe two or three. And the one night, somehow, we got the Week of Pog without the mics. Maybe it's because it felt like Week of Pog was getting shortchanged a little bit with Mike stealing all the thunder. And then, of course, Soul Planet, somehow, some way. Another strong tour. Since and Subtle Sounds rebounding a little bit. Reba and then Piper, I will say, made a strong comeback. It's been a while, you know, since we got multiple good Pipers back-to-back. -back. Had a pretty killer free in there. But basically, Hood, Ghost, Mike's. Haley's Comet was pretty good. But if I had to pick five songs from this tour... If you're like, all right, I'll just listen to that. Listen to every hood, listen to every ghost. and only like three max, you know. Mike's for sure, Soul Planet, Sense and Subtle Sounds, and Piper, I guess. I got through Piper in there. And then, if you still got time, Reba, Haley's Comet. There's even a good Santos in there, the Tweezer Fest night. Somehow they got a Tweezer jam out of the Santos. Tweezer also had a good, and it wasn't just that night. There was another good Tweezer. Had a good Ruby Waves, of course. I think I mentioned maybe the Yamar and the Stash from the 19th. Or perhaps I didn't. That might have been in take one of the video when the edibles took hold. <laughs> so, yeah, the Sacramento show would probably get overlooked. The Vegas run will not. <clears throat> the Halloween thing, you know, look, I still don't. I don't love it musically. And, you know, you could argue that, well, it'll eventually they'll be cool. But, you know, it'll be the real band then. They'll have the real instruments. They'll have everything, you know, that involves just whatever. They can go from a Mike's Groove to a Knuckle Bone Broth Avenue. You know, they'll have their instruments. It won't be limited, you know, I don't know, whatever, I don't know what I'm saying, but for fun and games, it was all good, but music, I don't know, I don't know about all that, but other than that, pretty much everything else was pretty cool, the 28th, really good, I did like the numbers, that's 6, 7 below, and if 6 was 9, kind of stood out from that night, I don't remember what stood out from the Animals Night, the Axilla 2, obviously, that was a big one in Vegas, and another Tweezer in Vegas, yep, Wolfman's Brother had a couple of good ones this run, so I don't know, that was all the stuff. But yeah, I did like the 15th in Arizona, Sacramento and Arizona, two shows that might not get talked about a whole lot. And I do still have some whiteboards. You can see them hanging back there. I don't know. We got, ooh, we got, that, we got one damage, though, unfortunately. The 28th, Vegas. Injured. Bad. And then one of the Eugene shows, I think the 20th, that was the bad Sharpie night. But if you're interested in any of the other ones, the Forum and Chula are gone. Those were actually pre-ordered. And I think it came through well for those guys. You know, they ordered them uh, even well before the tour started. They put in, said, we're going to those shows. We're going to get a YEM. Want the whiteboards. And I was like, ooh, man, hope I deliver. Hope I get a good whiteboard for them. Things worked out. I think I had to do some cramming, I believe, in the uh, the forum set whiteboard, I think, in the set list. Busted off like 27 songs on us in the second set. So, but other than that, and then I got a lot of front and backs, you know. You might be like, oh, cool, you got Arizona? And yeah, I got Arizona and Santa Barbara. But if somebody claims the Arizona, then boom, there goes the Santa Barbara. It's like I got Arizona on the front, Santa Barbara on the back. Same thing for two of the uh, Vegas runs, 29th and 31st, front and back. Got both of the Chase. Got the Eugene, the 19th, Sacramento, the 15th. Although I've got my... Eh. Kind of like that Sacramento show. Every now and then I like to keep one for myself. Got the 30, I feel like the 31st was the best looking whiteboard because, uh, you know, I already wanted, by the time I got back into town and sat down to make a whiteboard, I already knew what they were going to play and all that good stuff. Got it nice and spaced out. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know. So anyways, if you are interested in a whiteboard, every now and then people hit me up. And I do the front and back thing because, I don't know, I'm not really thinking about selling them what I'm doing. And I'm just like, just trying to get the most out of every whiteboard, I guess. 
And uh, yeah, Santa was probably the surprise of the tour. Did I say that? That one that was mixed in there with the Tweezer Fest that had the jam. That was kind of cool. And then they still yanked us around a little bit with the uh, encores. I like that. I think they opened up a show or opened up a second set with Loving Cup. Good. Get it out of the way. That same night they played Julius opener. Did get a couple of Juliuses though this year, right? For this tour. Uh, basically this year because we didn't get any in the summer. I don't know. It seemed pretty cool. Come some of that tower jamming kind of thing, you know. The peaks got a little better. Still not great. Rogue, man. Rogue. M-I-A, right? Hmm. Undermine. We get an ocelot on Animals Night, so. All right, guys. Boom. Maybe it is post-tour depression. You know, I sat down to do this a little bit ago, and I looked out there. I was like, oh, damn it. I missed a pack of leaves. So I ran out there and raked up the leaves real quick. So that's why I'm a little worn out. It's not post or post or It's not too It's not It's not to It's not the It's not the post postdoctoral depression. It's the rake and leaves. Fucking sucks. I gotta get a blower, man. Blow, man. What else? The guy said that to me one time at an ATM in the middle of the night. He was like, "What are you guys doing here?" Me and my buddy, we were youngsters. I don't know what we were getting cash for in the middle of the night, but it certainly wasn't cocaine. We were like, I don't know, man. What are you doing here? He was like, blow, man. What else? Boom. Kids don't do blow.